So I'm feeling quite emotional right now. A moment ago, yet again, I had tears welling up in my eyes and I have no idea what the time is. It's maybe 3.30, 4 a.m. And what has been an emotionally charged day, I've been laying here on my bed for hours just trying to wrap my head around the day's events and to understand why I'm feeling the way that I am. I guess I'm trying to find the right words to be able to articulate it to myself. And I thought earlier, I think the best way to describe it is I felt as if today I stood at the precipice of my own personal tipping point. You know, for years I've taken the small steps to combat the climate crisis. I recycle diligently, I've been a conscious consumer, I've given up eating meat, I've significantly reduced dairy, I have my artivism and of course the climate content for this YouTube channel. Yet after what I witnessed and what I generally felt a part of today, I really realised that these individual actions are simply no longer enough. Almost shamefully today for the first time, I went to the long running action of Extinction Rebellion Netherlands. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. Was lijmen, come on now. Die agent gebruikt geweld. Zagen jullie dat? Waar is de lijn? their non-violent civil disobedient action demanding that the Dutch government stop fossil fuel subsidies by blockading the A12 here in The Hague. And the A12 is an important artery road connecting The Hague to other major cities in the Netherlands. I went planning to support those participating, to take some footage and to create a video about it, but what eventuated for me personally was far from what you know I could have ever imagined. And what I do know now, as well as I know the back of my hand, is that a part of me has jumped off that precipice. And quite honestly, I just don't know yet how deep I've jumped in. The A12 blockade has been a series of protests. The first was in 2021, but the action was prevented by the police. And there were a number of successful blockades in 2022 and earlier this year before XR um, upped the ante. And since the 9th of September, have been holding blockades every day from 12 p.m. until they're either um, stopped from taking the road or the protesters take the road and are arrested and the road is cleared. And at the time of making this video, I calculated earlier this evening on the Wikipedia page that there has been 19 actions resulting in over a massive 6,000 arrests. I do need to verify this information, but however resilient, XR are committed to going back every day until the government meets their demands.
I guess for me, having read and heard these arrests in the media, and as I approached the meeting point where I could see the group gathering, you know, I, I was a little overwhelmed and there was this mixture of anticipation and trepidation, I think is the best word. You know, I was really unsure of what laid ahead. And I guess like many people, you know, I was raised as a law abiding citizen and to keep myself out of trouble and getting involved with the police. And I caught myself wondering, you know, I wonder just how many other people have this feeling of trepidation based on what they have seen and heard in the media and how that has stopped them from coming or wanting to participate. When I made it over to the group, I was really surprised how very calm it was. In fact, the first thing I noticed was just how relaxed people were. And I started speaking with one of the team who were assigned for the protesters' well-being. And as he pointed out the other people in official roles for that day, it was quickly apparent just how organized and thought through the protest was and how the participants' safety and well-being was of high priority. And then I had these unexpected tears you know, welling up in my eyes and I realized that here I am standing among this incredible and diverse group of people from all walks of life. And as I spoke to more people, it was just so clear how united everyone was with this shared purpose, you know, demanding a future or fighting for a future where our planet thrives. And I spoke to one lady in her 70s who told me, well, she was here for her children and her grandchildren and had been coming every day. And I spoke to another man, a young father of two, working two jobs, and he told me he was getting to the protest every few days, juggling between his work and his family responsibilities. I hadn't realized at the time, but I was actually at a secondary group and we were waiting for the confirmation that a group several hundred meters away were able to take the road and the energy was really beginning to change with this air of um, pride as they prepared to stand up and you know face those forces that threaten our very existence and I knew I would not be able to participate in the blockade itself by going onto the road having been to the XR website the night before I had read that I first needed to take an online training session so I wanted to join the many other people who had come as a support group on the side of the road. And as myself and the other supporters followed the protesters from the side as they entered into the underpass of the A12, I was struck by the courage and conviction of those protesters. You know, the people were from all backgrounds, were, you know, willing to risk arrest for something they believed in so strongly. And it was a testament to their unwavering dedication and their refusal to be silenced. And as we began the sort of act of civil disobedience, I really felt a surge of strength amongst everyone. The crowd moved as one, their voices rised in unison, they were demanding change and the protesters were supported by these countless others, you know, who watched from the roadside, inspired by the protesters' collective resolve, chanting, you are not alone. And the connection between the protesters and the supporters was so intense and united. It was unlike anything I had ever experienced. And it was in that moment I really realized that, hey, you know, this is more than just a protest. This is a movement. It's fueled by hope and it's fueled by love, you know, for our planet, for future generations, for all living beings. And it was the protesters' shared determination which was really carrying everything forward. And as I found myself standing, you know, shoulder to shoulder with many strangers who had become like comrades in supporting these protesters, I knew that this was just the beginning. As well as I knew that the fight for climate justice would be long and arduous, it was just evident that these people around me were prepared to weather any storm. They would not rest until their voices were heard and until action was taken to protect the planet. I honestly feel like this has been a turning point in my life, a moment when I realized that although my individual actions are important and we all need to continue taking these individual actions, it is collective action that will truly drive change. And in reflection, I also realized that, you know, the tears that were coming to my eyes, you know, they're not that of sadness, but it was more of this kind of relief knowing that there is still hope and there is resilience amongst the public. And I think probably most importantly is that 
together, regardless of background or regardless of our circumstances, we can build a future that thrives alongside nature and we can build this vision of a world where our planet is cherished and um, protected for generations to come.